Hi everyone, David Malley from Tech Know How, and today we're going to do something really cool. I've got a two-part series on histograms and skew determination made easy. So you're going to learn all about histograms, making vertical lines, horizontal lines, markers, things like that, and then determining skew and all of its components, whether it's positively skewed, negatively skewed, and the amount of skew, if it's highly skewed or less. So we're going to do that today. First, we're going to start off with, and this is all, all in Python, by the way. So First, we're going to start off with importing the Python library. So we've got right here, we're importing Seaborn, Pandas, NumPy, and Matplotlib. This is how you do it. It's right here, matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. Import NumPy as NP, import Pandas as PD, and import Seaborn as SNS. The reason why this middle one is here is I want to be able to see the graphs, the visuals in line in the code down below. So that's what this percent matplotlib in line is. So once you've done that, then we have to go and bring in the mispriced diamonds data set. And you'll find this online. It's an old R uh, example data set. You can easily find it just by typing in mispriced diamonds data set. You can also go to GitHub. It's there. And then you can also go uh, to different uh, R repositories out there that have data sets and whatever. So once you have that, it's a CSV. You're going to use pandas, which we loaded in above, PD from pandas. See that right here. Uh, read underscore CSV and then the location of your file. Now, this is going to be different than mine. I'm putting in a data frame called DF. DF is for data frame. And so you can see this part here does not matter. Okay. This part here is what matters, the name of the, and the CSV, and then it's wherever it's located on your computer, laptop, whatever. Okay. And then behind, right after this, I have DF.head parentheses four, which means I want to see the first four, four rows of data. I don't need to see any more. And that shows me this right here. Carrot, clarity, and price. That's the three columns the data has in it. Carrot is the uh, size of the diamond. Clarity is how clear it is or how dirty and obfuscated it is. And then the price. So, you know, that normally that's how they figure that out. So what we want to do with this, we're going to mess around with it a little bit. So I want to drop rows with any NA values. In this case, I don't believe there was any in this data set, but if there were, this is what you would use. So when you're looking at other data, you're applying it to other data sets, stuff you work with, you will want to figure out if there's nulls, NAs, things like that. So in this case, we're going to do DF, data frame, dot drop NA, that drops any rows with the uh, nulls in it. But what you see here is I'm not putting it back in a DF because if I drop nulls and I put it back in there, I've lost those rows, right? I had to have to go back and reload in the data set. Instead, what I'm doing is putting in a new data frame called DF1. So I still have, I can always go back to my DF data set. I've got DF1 now that has no nulls in it. So once I have that, then I'm going to create a histogram by clarity, which is the quality versus the carrot, which is the size we just went over. So what we've got here is if you look at this, I'm doing SNS, which is your Seaborn, this plot, data equals DF1, right? So I'm using the data frame one, X equals carrot. So I'm using the X axis is going to be the carrot uh, column. And then the column main column will be clarity. So it'll be based off these two against each other with 50 bins inside. PLT.show, which is plot.show, shows this. It's kind of hard to read, but it shows if you were to look at this close up, each one of these is, a, is one of the clarities, one of the uh, at the top. Okay. And you can see as you go along how many with the, the histogram or what the breakout is of that data for that particular clarity, SIV1, BS2, whatever, SI1, SI2, all these things. And um, you can see, obviously, there's very few at this end and quite a few at these ends, okay? Now, that's to show if, if you want to see that. We're also going to do some more stuff here. So what if we want to display the histogram of the diamonds, carrot size, and add a mean with a horizontal line count of 2,100 to it? So instead, now what we're doing is this. See this right here, sns.displot, same as we did before, right? Except for a difference, watch. It is df1, x equals caret, and bins equals 50, but I don't have that column equals clarity. Oops, let me get off that part there. I don't have the column equals clarity part right here anymore. I've dropped that. 
So I've just got this, see that? And then below that is just fine tuning the graph a little bit. I'm adding, a, see these don't really have the title I want, so I'm adding a title. Instagram diamond count by carat size, font size equals 14. I'm adding X and Y labels right here, carat and count. And then I'm also adding an AX horizontal line. That's what the H is for right here. Oops, let me get rid of that. And uh, 2100, color equals G for green, line style equals dash. See how I did that? So this could be AXV or AXH line. See this right here? This H could be a V. V would be for vertical line. H would be for horizontal line. That's how that works. And then plot.show, PLT.show. And once I do that, I end up with this. It's a pretty cool histogram that shows me the data for all the different carrot sizes. See, they're all in here and the count. And then the histogram of diamond count by carrot size says right here. And I've got the or that's the, the title of it. And then I've got the line right here at 2100. That's what I put in there, right? Yep. So it shows me how the data breaks out, the count of it, and by carrot. So carrot size would be, you know, where were they mostly? They're probably mostly around a little bit less than one full carrot, right? So when you go to get a diamond ring, a lot of people look at a half carrot or a three-quarter carrot or a full carrot. Very rarely do you be, get people who have three carrots and above. Okay, unless you're like an NBA star or, some, or an NFL player or something like that, or you're very wealthy. Um, so that And that looks really cool. It shows you the mean of the data that I've put in. I've manually put in it's 2100. And that's how it looks right there in the breakout of the data. You can see how, you know, where the carrots lie and how many counts there are at each carrot level. Now, um, we're going to get the mean of it to see... You know, what's the the mean of the price data and then plot the histogram of the diamond count by price and show the mean with a vertical line, right? So if I do this, right here, I've got histogram, but see, I've got a vertical line now. So I've got the AXV line instead of H line, and I've got the mean put in there. Now, mean underscore A, I've actually did down below here in part two, but I'll just cover it anyway because I didn't want to put it in here twice. So let me just show you how I got the mean it is numpy.mean, np.mean of the EF1 data frame one dot price. See that right there? So the price column, I'm using that to get the mean of it. Okay. And then if I do this and I just restate this right here, it's the exact same thing right here. That gives me mean of $3,932.79, well, basically 80 cents. So if we go up here, We've got mean A, we bring that in, and there it is right there, 3,900 and whatever dollars right there. That's our green line based on the XP line. So if you go through this, remember I showed you again, this is just a little bit different than the one above where we drop the column equals R. And then you just have the title, the price, the count for the X label and Y label. The AX vertical line, because we're doing a vertical line, we've replaced the, the hard uh, coded number here that was earlier of 2100. Now it's the, the mean, mean underscore A, which is a variable. You put that in, see it right there, right here. And you could actually put that above if you want to. That's fine. As long as you run it, it doesn't matter which order you run it in, uh, in Jupyter Notebooks here. And then we just use plot.show. And I did not change anything. The color is still green. The line style is still dashed. And you end up with this. Now, this could be any histogram you want, but it shows you exactly how to make these histograms. Obviously, by looking at this one, it's skewed to the left big time. But we're going to go more over that in the next video. And I'm going to go deeper into determining skew if it's uh, positive, negative, and if it's highly skewed or not, and how to measure the skew. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this uh, interesting and informational. Please stay tuned and watch for part two where we go over skew. Thanks again. Have a great day.